Good morning, guys. Today's video, yeah, never mind. Never mind. We still ain't got nothing going on. We ain't even got nothing in the works, but still, for the couple people that like watch my videos, I appreciate y'all. Let's get into the day's subject because, you know, sometimes I find it hard to find a good subject to do videos on, but god dang, I get in Facebook groups, man, and they make it really easy. Um, so yeah, we'll dive right in. And the subject kind of happened because a guy made a post and asking about good subs. And of course, somebody, you know, you got your Scar fanboys and they're quick to jump in with the worst sub that Scar makes. Got one of the worst scar subs on the market, period. The old Scar EVL. And a lot of you are watching this that have EVOs. And you're like, but Jerry, I love my EVOs. Cool. You might. I mean, I'm not saying they don't play. I'm just saying they're not a good sub. Uh, they were designed by a third grader that failed math, obviously. And to understand this, because a lot of you guys don't, which is why you just buy EVLs. And then the other half of people just don't listen. You got to go back and look at the DDX, which is the EVL's big brother. Price-wise, it's the little brother, but it, and honestly, it's the big brother. The DDX was kind of a straight-up copy of a uh, SA Sundown, but we're not even going to get into that. What we're getting into is uh, do your research on both subs. The DDX has a larger motor. And it's a considerably larger motor than the EVL. And then you can turn around and look at the coil size in each. And you're going to see why they rate the EVL more power. Because the EVL has a 3-inch coil and the DDX has a 2.5-inch coil. Now, in what world does that make any sense? Uh, none. None. In all reality, the DDX has the proper size coil for the motor, which means the EVL, they just decided to take a little bitty ass motor and shove a big coil in it without even being concerned about motor force. And that's where you get efficiency. And you all know how efficiency affects the speaker. The higher the efficiency, the louder it's gonna get on less power. Yeah, a three inch coil will handle more power, so the EVL will take more power, but the DDX is going to destroy it all across the board on less power because the EVL isn't efficient. Um, and yeah, I've tried to educate people on this. I'm like, learn how to read subwoofer specs. And I explained to them, you know, about coil size, bigger motor, motor force. They don't understand. But now this don't always come into fruition. Uh, because there are some bigger subs out there that just, they're, they're not great. And I love resilient sounds. I've never ran it, but I have been in some very impressive resilient sounds builds. And they've all had platinums in them. I've got lots of friends that are on team resilient sounds and... They, pretty much all them guys run Platinums because the teams ain't worth a shit. The teams suck. And, you know, that's a big old 120, 130 pound sub, depending upon which size you get, you know. It, it's just, it's terrible. And it has a huge motor. So, you know, sometimes going oversized on subwoofers is another bad thing. Uh... Usually, you could get tried and true. I mean, see, you know, what the masses think. And a lot of these guys in the groups will lead you in the right direction because most of the guys that know subwoofer specs and about subs agree with my post that the EVL is just a garbage sub. But whoever named it, I think they, they did really good at naming because I think when they designed that sub, they're like, this thing's a piece of shit, but we spent all this money designing it and having 10,000 of them made. And somebody's like, if we call it the evil, people will want it because it's evil. I think that's what happened. 
And then like the resilient sound teams, I think that the same kind of the same thing happened and they're like, well, look at it. We'll just let everybody know it's like 120 pound and they'll want it because bigger is better. Not always, you know. And it's like, I have seen people that had ZV5 Sundowns in a build and take them out and put Sundown teams in and there again, they lost 2DB. So, bigger subs ain't always better. And it's like me with the Prides. I love a three inch coil sub. I do. And this is the biggest, baddest sub Pride makes with a three inch coil. And number for number for amount of subs, I'm louder than any other Pride build in the US. I mean, yeah, the Team Pride van or truck's got like 618s in it. On, he's got double cone area, double power, and I'm two tenths quieter than him. So if you break it down for DB per sub, I'm way louder. Like each sub is just killing it. And I, you know, he's got these big, like, I don't know, I think he's got like the S5s in there or some shit, you know. The ones that cost $600 more per sub than these and doing nothing. So, you know, it comes down to efficiency a lot of time. And then you got to be worried about the company that is doing the TS parameters that give you an efficiency number. And another good example of this is battling with the blazer to get that thing just to play right with both windows. It loves playing with both one window up. And I hate that because that destroys doors. And I want to get it to play with both windows down so even going back to ds18 website you know they have like a little spec section when you look at a speaker looking at that it's telling me that each 15 ported once two and a half cubes okay kind of low for a sub that does 30 millimeters x max one way you know with that huge of a motor and the suspension it just like that's that's really low it's kind of weird. I've never seen that before. But then you download the manual, the owner's manual for the same sub, and it tells you it wants three cube. Now, see, obviously something got lost there in translation. So it's like, what what specs do you go by? N nobody knows, because you know, website saying one thing, owner's manual saying something else. But if you go by owner's manual, that's kind of what i went off of when i designed the enclosure so you run into shit like this all the time and a lot of it's trial and error that's why i recommend just if you're out looking to buy a good sub do your homework uh see what other people think and there there again that's even bad advice for me saying what other people think you need to find a knowledgeable base head and see what they think because you go in any of the car audio groups on Facebook and you ask about SCAR and all you're going to get is people saying EVL, EVL, EVL. Which, honestly, is terrible advice because the people that buy SCAR, obviously, most of them haven't ran anything like big name brand. But then again, some people are just on a budget and they're like, Shh, I'm not spending that for a sub. I'm gonna jump on SCAR. Then people should buy DDXs because they're cheaper than the EVO and they're a far superior sub. It's like probably the best sub SCAR makes. The next would be like the VXF. VXF's a good, you know, a good all around sub. Uh, the ZVX, I mean, I think that's more of a number sub because it don't really sound as good. And then you get into the DNR, which God, it would be a toss up to what sub is the biggest piece of shit between the DNR and the EVL. I don't know, guys. I hope this video helps somebody. You know, bigger sub don't always mean better. And even when you jump that gap up, like I said, the DDX two and a half inch coil, really efficient woofer, a lot of motor force for that coil. That means it's going to handle power good, but it's going to get loud on that power. EVL is going to go the, the, the opposite direction. And that's what a guy told me in a post. He's like, 
I don't care. My my EVOs handle more power. And I'm like, honestly, really, they don't, you know. Okay, he, he point blank told me, I don't care if a DDX gets louder on less power. Mind blown. My mind is really blown. But anyway, when you jump to a three inch coil from a two and a half, you're automatically gonna lose some efficiency just because bigger coil. And then the same thing happens when you go from a three inch coil to a four inch coil. You lose efficiency. And then, you know, there's subs out now that have a five inch coil and people look at that and they're like, oh, that's gotta be badass because it's got a five inch coil. Well, a lot of people don't understand is that five inch coil, you're gonna have to have 8,000 watts on the bitch to get it to do anything, you know? Because the higher you go, the more efficiency you lose. So something to take away, you know, then there's other factors like enclosure and port and so on and so forth. But we're not talking about that. Basically, we're just talking about subs and motor force, coil size. That kind of means everything. But at the end of the day, coil, motor force and how it works with your coil is what really matters. So peace out, everybody. Have a great day. And as always, face on.